Hey, Clayton Bates here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to update the notifications in the back end of your Shopify. So like order confirmation, shipping confirmation, the emails people actually get when they place an order, when you market a ship, stuff like that. I'm actually going to show you how to change your logo, the colors on the actual um, email that people get and actually how to change some of the wording. Now, there's a tiny little bit of coding um, that I'm actually going to show you how to do because I'm just using the basic Shopify notification emails. You could use an app like Clavio or, you know, there's a few different ones where you can actually really customize um, the whole email. But most people, when they're starting out, they don't really need to use these paid apps and stuff just for the notifications. Like if you're doing over $50,000 a year, then yeah, maybe it would be worth um, having some paid apps to do these notifications. But when you're just starting out, it's it's normally good just to keep it simple. So basically, if you're in the back end of Shopify, you just want to click settings down in the bottom left. And then you want to come here to notifications. And this is going to open up all the notifications. So like auto confirmation, um, shipping confirmation, abandoned cart, stuff like that. The first thing you actually want to do is click this button customize. Now, most people actually forget to do this, but you could basically add your logo um, and change the button to the color to match your website. It's really good to do this. I remember the first website I ever built for myself back in 2014, I actually never realized I, I could even do this for like the first two years. And it just looks so basic when people are getting these emails. So it really helps with branding and stuff. Now with the logo here, you just want to click choose file. And then you just want to like basically upload your, your logo from your desktop. And it's there now. And then you can click on the color here and you can change the color to whatever you want. Um, normally, I'd probably make it the same color button as, as all the buttons on your website. So you just grab the color code and paste it into here. And then you press save. Now, basically on every single email, your logo and the button is going to be the same color as the rest of your website. Now, normally it won't automatically update when you press save. So you could either refresh the page or go back and go back into it. And now we have our logo here and the button is a different color. If, you, if your logo is too small or too big, um, you can actually go here where it says logo width. Um, you can change the size until it's right. Um, so you could make this bigger or smaller. Now, if we actually go back here, now I'm going to show you how to actually customize the actual email. So if we went into like order confirmation here, there's going to be all this code here. Now, this might seem a little bit daunting to look at if you've never done any coding or anything. Um, but if you want to do some basic little edits to it, uh, I'm going to show you how to actually do that. So let me just move that for a bit. If we, pr if we press preview here, it's actually going to open up what the email looks like. So we have our logo here. It will have the order number here. And then it'll have like the, the subject title. And then it'll say like, hi, John, we're getting your order ready to be shipped. We will notify you when it has been sent. So if you actually want this to be changed, I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now, if we just copied some of what it actually says here, we can easily find it in the code. So if we actually go back here and press Control F, I can't remember what it is for a Mac, um, but basically see how it's highlighted these words here. So this is actually the sentence that it says. We could actually add some more to it. So we could write like your um, currently we are we're experiencing some delays and your order might take a few more days to get to you whatever you know it doesn't have to be like that and then we'll just copy this and paste it on the other section too so we'll paste it right there and then if we actually press preview now it's going to have the new text so see how it says currently we're experiencing um, some delays blah 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 and we've added some more text there now if you actually wanted to make a space so if we actually go back 
and we just if we just see how we've got it currently there if we just there whoops it just jumped but if we just press enter there it's actually not going to work so see how there's a space here that won't work there actually needs to be a line of code there to actually break it up now if you actually go to this website html um, dash online.com backslash editor backslash um, you can actually write code in here so basically if on the left is what we actually want it to display and then on the on the right we'll actually have the code now if you copied all this code into there it's not going to work because it's all set up um, for how it displays on shopify and grabbing things from shopify it won't work but for example if you wanted to make a space and we just press enter here see over here it's got a line of code there that's actually a space so if we actually went back here and put that there so we have that line of code right there and then currently so we'll do it on the next line too so basically we have that line of code on both spots if we actually open up the preview now see how it's got a space there there is one problem that i'm going to show you how to fix as well so now we have this space here, but the problem is this text is not the same. And the reason why is because we have to actually assign a type of text to it. So if we actually go here to currently at the start and at the end, we have to put some, put some code there. So we're just going to do the little bracket then P then bracket. So just jump. So right there like that. So that's just going to tell it to be normal text. So if we just copy this and then just go to the end as well and paste it. Sorry, it's a bit jumping around, but you know, hopefully you get the idea. And then put it at the back there. So basically it's just telling Shopify that this needs to be normal text. So if we press preview, it should be all the same text, hopefully. So see how it's the same type of text now. If you ever wanted to like do it differently, so we've got this little bit of code here, this little bit of code there. If we just copied this and went over into this and pasted that code right there, um, we could actually change it. So if there's any words that you wanted bolded or underlined or anything like that, you just go over here. This is pretty much like a Word document. So if just for example, currently, if we wanted to make it bold, we just click bold and it's going to add the code over here. If we want to underline, it's going to add the code over here. And then basically we're just going to copy this code and then go back here and then just replace it. So we're going to highlight that, paste it in there and then highlight this, paste it in there. Now if you press preview now, those words should be bolded. So see how it says currently is bolded and underlined. Pretty simple to do that. Um, like I said, you probably don't want to mess around with stuff, all the other code, um, unless you really know what you're doing and then you just press save. The other good thing about this is if you made a mistake or anything like that, and you just scroll down to the bottom, it says revert to default. So it's actually going to default back to, um, what it originally was. So, you know, if you make a mistake all good, um, the other thing as well, when you press preview, Oh, sorry, my bad. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. You could go through all of them. The most important ones are order confirmation, shipping confirmation, and the abandoned cart one. Uh, where are we here? I think I just went past it by accident. Uh, been a while. Oh yeah, abandoned cart right there. So you could actually go into the abandoned cart one. The other thing with abandoned cart, so if we actually go back here to settings and then we go to checkout and then scroll down to the bottom, <clears throat> it actually says how frequently the abandoned cart gets sent out. So basically at the moment, it always defaults to 10 hours, but you could, you could change it to one hour, six hours, 24 hours, stuff like that. And it will, it will send it out at that time. Now, if you ever have like, if you ever use Clavio 
and you set up the abandoned carts and all the other emails and stuff, um, or, well, especially the abandoned cart, sorry, you just come here and see how it says automatically send abandoned cart checkout emails. You just turn it off and then use the Clavio to actually use it and then press save down here. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully that helped you to be able to adjust the emails and stuff. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know what videos you want to make next um, and subscribe and like if you like these videos. I'm trying to be more dedicated to making more videos. Um, so that really helps. So until next time, have a good one and talk to you later. Bye.